Hello everyone, and welcome back to Soarin' Review. And today, we're going to be doing 2021 Top 10-ish Worst NASCAR Pain Schemes from this year. Similar to the Best Pain Schemes uh, video, the criteria is no new pain scheme, or no pain schemes that existed prior to this year, and no throwbacks. So, Ricky Stenhouse Jr.'s terrible Ricky Craven throwback does not count, because technically it is a throwback, and so it does not qualify to be put on this list. I will say, there were not that many bad paint schemes this year. Uh, I had some trouble really finding paint schemes that I didn't like, so... Uh, I do think that's really good for the sport, starting to get designers that are really, you know, creating cars that are, you know, nice to look at on the racetrack. Before we get started, remember you can use code SORIN72 to get free shipping on all orders, $20 or more. Now let's get started. First off, honorable mentions. Not that many, but a few, uh... This Tyler Reddick, Caterpillar car, not a big fan of the colors. These uh, Knoxville Spire cars aren't the greatest. That Anthony Alfredo, the Pete Store car does not work well at all. The black number and the weird maroon does not look very nice. That Joey Gaste car down in the corner has a weird lime green with a Poor navy blue, along with photos of lots of people that, while it is for a good cause, just is not organized greatly. It's not very creative. The two Josh Balicki cars are mainly for color schemes. That Bailey Curry is not the nicest to look at. And the Anthony Alfredo uh, does not look good. That bronze gold is not how the scheme's supposed to be. To my knowledge, it's supposed to be how it was at Richmond, I think, where it's more gold. And so it just does not look good. But let's get into the actual list. Starting off with number 11, I said top 10-ish. But you'll see some schemes do repeat. So we do have basically 10 paint schemes here. This is James Davison's uh, 911 uh, tribute car from Bristol. Or not 911, Pearl Harbor. Uh, I don't think this is very creative. It's a black base with an American flag only behind the number. And then for whatever odd reason, the number is a like a lime green type. It just does not work good. I think had it that patriotic American flag been throughout a good uh, chunk of the car, it would have looked nicer. And if for some reason there wasn't green numbers that also would have helped this scheme just an odd choice overall um love the meaning don't love the scheme number 10 ryan priest's healthy choice power bowls car uh i do not like this car i think it's uncreative uh it is not a matte black or a gloss black you can see there's like outlines of something uh, on the car, though I'm not sure what, but it's uncreative. It's they could have made the scheme look very nice, and instead, this not only is the Healthy Choice logo lazily put on there, but it has the green box around it. It looks like I made it in a NASCAR Heat Evolution or a paint booth. It is terribly bad. Does not look good at all. Uh, if I saw this on the track, I probably wouldn't even know what it was. The logos are that small. Very, very poor choice of whoever designed this car. At number nine, Kyle Tilly's Blacktop Mojo car from the Indy Road Course. I think it's an all right paint scheme. I like the arrows coming from the 78, but I just feel that it's a little boring and the color is terrible. That uh, brick colored red. Just does not look great on a race car. It reminds me of that brick font 
MBM car from a few years ago. If you know the one I'm talking about, then you know. Just not a great paint scheme at all. Just, it's just odd. Number eight and seven, Ryan Priest's and Ricky Stenhouse Jr.'s Bush's Best Beans car. This is odd. This car is not very fun to look at. That weird blue with a pale pastel yellow and red. It's very busy. And then for some reason, there's just a giant bean on the side. I just don't think it looks very nice. The dark navy blue numbers. I see what they're trying to do. That's the, you know, the only other color is where the logo is. I just don't think it works very well. Not to mention Priest's car has, it's, sponsored by Kroger as well, which on the back it has that white swoosh in the back with the funny peep cartoon people. It's just not fun to look at. They should have stuck with two colors at max, three. Either get rid of one of the blues or don't have red or something like that. It just is too busy and just not a great paint scheme. And number six, David Starr's special report with Brett Breyer. This was from the Coca-Cola 600. If you recall, this is the car that, uh, one of the cars that was very slow during the Coke 600, where I am, um, if you recall, I made a video about the unsafetyness of lapped cars. It was very, very dangerous during that race. Uh, was slow. This car is odd blue with yellow and, red binding it together the yellow trim doesn't even go all the way to the end of the car the quarter panel uh brett B Breyer's face is on i think i spelled his name wrong i think it's buyer not Breyer. but his face is on the car it's not even centered it's just odd it is a perfect representation in my opinion of a low-funded car i mean i'm happy that they got a sponsorship I know this sponsor was on the car for multiple races, but not a fun paint scheme to look at. For number five, Kyle Tilly's back on the list, this time with the Bremont Battle Associates car. Again, another patriotic car that's poorly executed. For some reason, all the colors on this car are very dark. That dark navy blue mixed with a dark red. Kind of go with an American flag. It's back. It's black in the back of the car with these weird gold numbers, though they're not really gold. They're more of a brownish yellow, just not. It's very weird. And what's strange about it is it looks gloss in the picture, but during the race when he spun out, um, it looked almost like it was matte. It just does not. It took me a while to realize that it was patriotic because the blue is just so dark compared to the very similar black in the rear of the car. Just not a great design. Plus, to be honest with you, I didn't know what the sponsor was. I still don't. So not a very great... It looks like it says chronometers. Again, just not a great paint scheme. And number four, we're starting to get into pride. The four paint schemes that I knew for a fact were going to be on this list. Number four... Ryan Newman's Oscar Mayer Bacon car. For some reason, they made at the very beginning of the year, they made a phenomenal Oscar Mayer paint scheme. That bright orange car. Um, it raced at Homestead and Bristol Dirt and Richmond. And then for whatever reason, they switched at half year and made these terrible paint schemes. This one is not as bad as the next one, which I think you may already know which one it is. But this is just an ugly yellow with a weird-looking bacon stripe. The Oscar Mayer logos are kind of just there. It's just so bad. It is just not fun to look at. It's ugly. It is really ugly. And the number three, it's followed up by the even worse one. Oh, my gosh. It is. Who made this paint scheme? Is what I want to know. Who made this? Uncreative. Lack of space. Look how much space it is. It almost looks like an unsponsored car. Yeah, I understand that Like, there's a hot dog on the top. 
that's cool, but why is the Oscar Mayer logo not centered? Uh, the only reason I can see is maybe, like, so for TV angles. That doesn't really make sense, though. Were they trying to avoid covering up the hot dog? It still does. The Oscar Mayer logo in the back, I don't get why they don't make, like, two of the logos or just space it out. Absolutely terrible pain scheme. One of the worst. And at number two, Christopher Bowles, the Walt Patriotic car. Is it patriotic? Yes. Is it for the 9-11 memorial race? Yes. But absolutely terribly executed. You have that DeWalt yellow with black and a silver. But then you have this odd blue. Kind of like an auto owner's blue. But it fades from this dark to like a very weird lightish blue. Some very small stars. And then for some reason the number 20 has a red trim around it. Which does not work at all. It just is... Vi and this is not even... I'm not taking into account the playoff banners, nothing. It is just a terrible paint scheme. It is just so bad. The pa It doesn't scream patriotic to me. It screams lazy. It screams poorly executed it is just the coloring is terrible of the patriotic blue and stuff does not work with the dewalt colors at all not a great paint scheme but it doesn't it is not as bad as number one matt benedetto's master force tools slash menards paint scheme from the coca-cola 600 one of the worst paint schemes i've ever laid eyes on that dark green is absolutely hideous with the Menards neon yellow the it is just does not work and then you have a white this weird white design I think it could work with other colors but it doesn't work when you have neon rims what's also weird is this was raced at the coca-cola 600 so you had this next to all those patriotic paint schemes. What a terrible paint scheme. The Some of the worst color combinations I think you could ever put together. Nothing in this car would make me want to go to Menards. If I, or Master Force Tools. Didn't even know what it was because I can't see the logo on the hood. If I saw this car. And whatever sponsor was on it, I would not want to go. Terrible. Is it as bad as last year's paint scheme? Worst paint scheme of the year? I don't think so. But it it is very bad. The worst paint scheme of the year. That's going to do it, though, for this video. Tell me what you think in the comments below. Remember, you can use code SORIN72 to get free shipping on all orders, $20 or more, when you order from Circle B Diecast. That's code SORIN72. Also, follow me on Twitter if you want, at ReviewSORIN. Uh, more videos should be coming out. I don't know what they will entail, though. Uh, Christmas is soon, so expect a Christmas haul video. Other than that, uh, maybe some more diecast reviews and any other ideas that I think of. That's going to do it. Thank you so much for watching, everyone, and goodbye.